Hello and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. Today I'm going to run through how to flash the latest version of Betaflight onto the Diatone GT2 Crusader. I've had so many questions about whether you should flash the latest version of Betaflight onto your GT2 Crusader. Personally, I tend to keep up with the latest stable releases, but if you don't feel comfortable actually doing this, then probably best to stick with what you've got installed on your quad already, or what the GT2 comes already flashed with. But I thought I would run through how I do an update, because I'm going through it today. The uh, developers at Betaflight bring out releases on a pretty regular basis. We're in March 2017 now and we're already on release 3.1.6 which has got a few things in which I've wanted to see fixed for quite a long time. So let's run through in detail how we actually do this. So all you need to flash the latest version of Betaflight onto your quad is your quad, a USB lead and a PC. You don't need a battery, this will be powered off the USB lead itself. So you need to get a copy of the Betaflight GUI, the configurator. You can get this by going into Google and searching for Betaflight Chrome. The configurator is actually a Chrome web app, so it works on any device. Go into the Chrome web store, and here's Betaflight. I've already got this installed, so it just says launch. But if you haven't got it installed, they'll, this will just say install, install on your machine and you're ready to go. On a Mac, you're not going to have to install the same USB drivers that you might have to on a Windows laptop. So here we go, we've got Betaflight installed. We can connect up our USB lead. So on the GT2, there are two boards. The bottom board is the VTX and the OSD and on the, the top board is the flight controller and that's the one you want to use. It's this mini USB lead on here which we plug in like that. We can see it's powered up from the USB lead. Uh, if we look in Betaflight we can now hit connect. quick way to check that it's connected is that as you move the quad around you will see it moving on the screen. We first of all need to check what version of Betaflight is currently flashed on this particular quad. So we go to the command line interface, type version. And you can see here we're actually running the SP Racing F3 version 3.1.5 which came out last month. I'm going to flash the latest version which is 3.1.6. So the first thing to do is actually disconnect from the quad. Go to the firmware flasher. It's already detected here that uh, we've got uh, an SP Racing F3 board. We need to choose the latest version, which is 3.1.6 stable, which came out about a week ago. You actually need to set the manual board rate to be 57600. This is a slow way of flashing, but it's reliable. We're not going to do a full chip erase because we want to keep all our existing settings, which is fine. So if we go down here and say load firmware. That's just simply downloading the binary which you're going to flash onto our quad. So just double check, manual board rate, full chip erase is off, no reboot sequence. So from here we just go to flash firmware. This takes a little while. Yay, it's done. So it says it's now successfully flashed. Let's go back and connect to our quad. All looks good. Back to the command line interface and type version. And here we can see we've actually got the latest version 3.1.6 
February 21st version. Uh, I think actually the date it was released was February the 27th. Now we've got the latest version of Beta Flight, version 3.1.6, installed on our GT2. I'm just going to do a quick check to make sure that all the settings in Beta Flight are where they should be. So we've got our quad connected to our PC. We can go back into Beta Flight. I've got my transmitter turned on. My quad is connected and it all looks great. So let's just double check everything is correct. So we check the ports. These are all good. UART 1 is actually used for the USB connection to the quad. We don't want to fiddle with that and that's where it should be. It should be turned on. UART 2 is used by the on-screen display. That should be turned on. And UART 3 is the SBUS connection. So it's a serial RX setting. If any of these connections aren't what they should be, just simply make the make them as they should be and hit save and reboot. Go to configuration. We're using an SBUS receiver and it's set to SBUS, which is correct. Um, we'll check that the receiver is working. So here we are. So throttle and yaw are working, pitch and roll are working, aux 2 is working, aux 1 is working and aux 3 is working exactly where it should be. So we look at our flight modes, arm switch Armed. is working, this is how I set up my flight modes which is angle, horizon and when the switch is all the way forward that's acro but I have ammo set for that as well. We select the beeper, that's working correctly. And just check the PID tuning. To be honest, I used all the defaults that come with Beta Flight. The only thing I changed is the Super 8, which I tweak up a little bit. So that all looks great. So we can disconnect from Beta Flight. So the next quick thing to do is just to check that the quad is working on its own with a battery. So we disconnect it from beta flight. Make sure that you have no props and importantly, it's a very easy one to forget this, that you've got a VTX antenna connected. If you connect a battery and there's no antenna connected, it powers up the VTX board and because there is no antenna, you can actually fry the output stages of the VTX. So make sure you've got an antenna connected. We get hold of the battery, make sure that's all turned off. Telemetry recovered. It's making encouraging Telemetry noises. Lost. Telemetry recovered. So the first thing to do is just check that it arms and that the motors are turning in the right direction. Armed. That's all good. Perfect. So I hope you found that useful. Flashing a new version of Beta Flight or Clean Flight onto your quad shouldn't be a difficult thing to do, and it's not. You only have to do it a few times to feel really comfortable with it. As usual, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll do my very best to answer them. We'll see you next time.